Good morning, listeners. You are welcome to Open Heavens Devotional Review for today, Saturday, July 11th, 2020. Grace to the humble. The topic is Grace to the humble. Shall we pray? Father, we want to thank you. We thank you for the light in your word. Entrance of your word brings light and understanding. Let that word illuminate our hearts. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Grace to the humble. For today, 11th of July, year 2020. Our memory verse is in 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 6. 1 Peter 5, 6. Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time. The Bible reading is from the book of Luke, chapter 18, from verse 10 to 14. Luke 18, from verse 10 to 14. Two men went up into the temple to pray, the one a Pharisee and the other a publican. The Pharisee stood and prayed thus with himself, God, I thank thee that I am not as other men are, extortioners, unjust, adulterers, or even as this publican. I fast twice in the week. I give tithes of all that I possess. And the publican stand afar off would not lift up so much as his eyes unto heaven, but smote upon his breast, saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. I tell you, this man went down to his house justified rather than the other. For everyone that exalted himself shall be abased, and he that humbled himself shall be exalted. Wow. Psalm 51 verse 17 says that the sacrifices of God are a broken spirit and a contrite act. O God, thou will not despise. One of the fastest ways to commit spiritual suicide is to believe that you are a giant in the Christian faith. Believe me, there is no giant in Christianity. Man's righteousness is like a filthy rat before the Most High. Many years ago, during a meditation session at a conference, I fell into a trance in which I found myself among angels. They were all so pure that you could practically see through them. Then I looked at myself and I was disgustingly filthy. This was surprising then because I was already a holiness preacher. If anyone had told me I was that dirty, I would have argued with them but I could see it for myself. Everyone may see you like a spiritual giant, but don't be fooled to God. To God, you are still a baby. Never come before him stating your credentials. I pay my tithe. I preach the gospel. I forgive my neighbor. So, Lord, you have to hear me. This is spiritual pride, and God resists the proud. According to 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 5. If anyone holds the, uh, the other anything, you are the one that holds him. Tell him, Lord, please have mercy on me in this area where I need your intervention. Remember my dedication to your kingdom and please have mercy on me. When you pray thus, he responds quickly. David was a man after God's heart because he always came humbly before him. Despite his achievements and feats for God, he never boasted in his presence. He always came seeking mercy. That's the kind of man that God can call a man after my heart. You may have done many great and mighty things for God. Remember Moses, even after all he had done for God, he still did not get to the promised land. It is only those who remain babies in the hands of God who can reach the promised land of heaven. 
In Matthew chapter 5, verse 3, Jesus said, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Are you humble or proud in spirit? This is a challenge to us all believers. Either we are humble or we are proud. It's a question we need to ask. Because for anyone who thought that he has, he has attained the greatest height in Christianity, our Father in the Lord said it's a spiritual suicide. The scripture says that let him that thinketh his standard take it lest he fall. Do you know, beloved, that the only person who needs to be afraid of a fall is somebody who is standing. Those who are on the floor, they have already fallen. And that's why if you know, uh, you believe that you are standing, then you need adequate care. So it is wrong to come before God based on what you count as your righteousness. Oh God, I give this. God, I give that. God, I do this. God, I do that. God can get somebody else to get those things done. He can't. I learned some lessons as I'm growing in faith. Very, very early in my Christian work with God as a preacher. Anytime an assignment shows up in the household of faith, and I say within myself, I think I am the most qualified to tackle that assignment. Interestingly, they will never call on me to come and take the assignment. Thank God I learned my lesson very early. They would never call on me to come and take the assignment. So a number of times, when I get some assignment, it draws me closer to him because I see it as an oversized shoe. I see it as something I don't have the capability. And I go to him, my first assignment to pastor, as a student pastor, I did cry to him and I said, Oh God, when you send a fool on an errand, you know it's you and him that will do the job together. And I thank him that uh, about 23, 24 years, he's been faithful. Faithful in all the assignments that he has given to us. So when you approach God, you come on a platter of mercy, not on a platter of works, not on a platter of, of pride. God resists the proud. No wonder the Bible says that narrow is the way. He said the, the pompous cannot pass. So anyone who is feeling big, who is feeling larger than life, I'm sorry, the way is very narrow. There is no way you can pass through such way. But broad is the way that leads to destruction, and many are those who find it. So when you come before the Lord, you need to do as David always do, coming with a reverence heart, coming with total surrender, coming before the Lord to say, I need your intervention. Remember your word. Remember your promises concerning my life. And you will see God stand tall for you at every point in time. Grace is only given to the humble. The Bible says, humble yourself. And let me challenge you with this. Humble yourself. He didn't say, let God humble you. I make bold to let you know that God does not humble somebody. God humiliates. If you need him to come and humble you, he will humiliate you. And after the humiliation, without any doubt, you will become humble. If you don't believe me, you can ask from Vashti. A long while, as I was reading the book about Esther and Vashti, I thought Vashti was sent out of the palace. No. A king's palace in the olden days is a very, very huge place. Vashti was not sent out of the palace. Vashti was confined to a section within the palace, you know, the estate. And I imagine sometimes in the evening, she would look through the window and see her former husband, and Esther taking a stroll. You could imagine how humble 
she would have become. So when you humble yourself under, under the mighty hand of God, it's going to lift you up and exalt you in due time. If you don't humble yourself under his mighty hand, then you have positioned yourself for destruction. Why? Because God says, I am a jealous God. So he hates arrogance. Why he dealt with Pharaoh was because of his pride. Because Pharaoh, you know, that word Ra talks about God of the sun. So Pharaoh believes that uh, he is the most high, the strongest person. What of Nebuchadnezzar? Interesting. God turned him from a king to become a wild beast. And I guess that his wildness was so terrible that even when lions saw him, they could not kill him. So he must have been very, very terrible. But so that he could know that most high rules in the affairs of men, God brought him back after seven years and nobody sat on that throne. I pray for you that as you take the step and the process to humble yourself, may God give you that grace. The prayer point says, Father, help me to remain humble in the mighty name of Jesus. And if you have not started the process of being humble, tell him, Father, give me the grace to be humble. But if you know you have started the process, tell the Lord, Father, help me to remain humble. I pray that that grace will be sufficient for you in the mighty name of Jesus. Have a pleasant day, and the Lord will multiply grace unto you. In Jesus' name.